This has been bugging me for a long time, so here's an attempt to explain the drop model results for the aft center of gravity limit estimate of reference 1. When you hear me say CG, I'm referring to the center of gravity. The equation used for the estimate of mean aerodynamic chord, also known as C-bar and abbreviated as MAC, comes from reference 2. The estimated value is shown as a pink line in the diagram. The wing reference chords, C sub R, the root chord, and C sub T, the tip chord, are also shown. The two pink hash marks on the center line represent the leading edge and the trailing edge of the MAC extrapolated to the fuselage center line. It's common for CG locations to be referenced by some percentage of MAC, with 0% being referenced from the fuselage station corresponding to the leading edge of the MAC. 100% refers to the trailing edge of the MAC reference. The drop model consisted of 1 16th inch flat sheet balsa wood cut to the plan form of the diagram. Polyhedra was added to the wing so the model was laterally stable while pitch stability could be studied as a function of CG. The fuselage consisted of 3 32nd by 1 quarter inch stick hardwood balsa glued to the center line of the plan form. The horizontal tail included an elevator with soft wire hinges that allowed the adjustment as a function of CG. Drop model testing initiated at a CG of about 25% MAC with a small amount of trailing edge up elevator deflection, expecting that this would be a good starting point. It was quickly learned that 25% was unstable at all elevator deflections. 20% MAC was also unstable at all elevator deflections. The trim glide in the video of reference 1 was at a CG of 8% with 10 degrees trailing edge up elevator. As the center of gravity is removed aft, trim elevator deflections were also reduced as required to reduce pitching motions. The resulting glide paths were observed and videotaped. Hindsight being 2020, we could have saved a lot of testing had we started at a barely trailing edge up elevator deflection and just moved CG aft from about 10%. As the CGs approached 15%, the trim elevator deflections approached zero, and the glides became too flat to stay within video range. Drop model test results indicated that 15% was a good estimate for the CG aft limit. This seemed too far forward because typical conventional stable aircraft CG limits are usually aft of 25%. Unlike the real YF-22 or more representative models of the YF-22, the models used here had a significant amount of lifting surface area which was actually flat wing ahead of the area used to estimate the MAC. This unaccounted for error in the estimate resulted in a more forward than expected reference CG to balance the models at stable flight conditions. It may have been more accurate to have used the integral form of the equation for C bar in reference to. The drop model was done more for fun than for any other reason. There are several technical reasons, Reynolds number, scaling, mass properties, etc., that question the merit of using the drop model. As can be seen in the video, confidence in the results didn't carry enough weight to warrant rebalancing the airplane before the first successful flight. It is interesting to note, though, that the drop model predicted the RC model would be unstable for the first flight, and as it turned out, it was. The most important part of this project was that it was incredible fun. Thank you for listening.